been a very busy week for me. Been helping uh, harvest crops for another farmer. I guess he got behind and he's like, yeah, I can use it for a day. He's like, all right, no big deal. Then day two, then day three. <laughs> like a week later, I was just still hauling for him. I've totally, I haven't, you know, buzzed my head or shaved for a long time. So today is going bye-bye. So kind of that funny stage, you know, where you're balding, you just got to shave it all off. But one thing I do believe in is cutting your own hair. I've done it most of my life. I've only paid for like five, six haircuts in my entire life. Let's do this. Super simple, saves me five, 10 bucks a haircut over practically a lifetime, so I'm cool with that. Oh, I got something else to show you. It's not what you think it is. <sighs> Holds basic size weapons, Glocks, whatever. This is a PX4 Storm. It was just super accessible, so this is the one I grabbed. But you can wear it like this. If you want to be like this, you can you know, so however you want to carry it, it's got some micro grip here. So you can, one size fits all. I'm like a size 35, 36 inch waist, getting chunky in my old age. This is made by Asan Yang, another free product that I got, and it's kind of cool. I like adding things to my uh, supplies. Concealment. Now this is a full size, so maybe what I should do is throw a shirt on and see how it fits. Just want to film in. So anyway, I mean you can see it. I mean it's full size, so you can see a little uh, silhouetting there. But depending what clothing you wear, this is loose and baggy. But if you're a woman and you have a chest, that'll also help conceal that. So it's made for men or women. It's just another uh, alternative that's out there. So I mean, it kind of kind of hides it. So there you have it. <laughs> anyway, I'll have to figure out the way I like it, but this is my first time messing with it so you're learning with me all right so back to farming I had the opportunity to work with some old farmers retired farmers guys who've lost everything and um, asked them about the organic versus traditional farming methods making our products better genetically modified and all that stuff and one farmer was was interesting he's like the modifying our crops is the greatest thing that's ever happened to the world. And I was like, well, what do you mean? He's like, if I tried to grow organically, I'd get half the yield. And I was like, hmm, interesting. I mean, that's why you pay more in the store, right? They can't produce as much of it, and it's a lot more work. You got to weed it, and you need a lot more people in there keeping the thing uh, going. They can't spray it. Because back when his father was farming, he was lucky to get, in this case, we're talking about spuds. He's like, he, he was lucky to get 20 tons per acre. He's like, today we're getting 25 tons per acre. Like, we're able to produce more. He's like, and we're, we're living longer than we ever have. And granted, you're talking medical versus food and all this stuff, and some people are claiming disease, whatever. So I'm not an expert in those fields. I've heard the stuff at the same time. I'm not here to discuss that. I'm just here to point out a few thoughts that I found were interesting because reality is I don't know. And he's like, the organic crops don't store as long. He's like, there's just problems with it. You know, there's a lot of people that are all, uh, he talked about heirloom seeds, you know, getting back to an original 
seed trait. He's like, they just don't produce as much. Just like animals. You want a purebred, you want this and that, and they take the best traits and they breed it and they breed it. And they, we have standards, you know, if you're out there and you have a, a bull on the field and you have your cows, you want your bull to be one of the best to spread that genetic trait. And that's what they've done with farming. But it's just interesting to hear the farmer side of it. And he's like, we're able to feed the world because we've modified crops. And he said, uh, there's a company out there that genetically modified a potato and nobody wants to touch it. The restaurants, you know, McDonald's, these guys don't want to touch it because right now GMO is a nasty word in society. Everybody's kind of, oh, we got to go organic or back to our natural roots. And he says, all we did was we took the best traits out of a potato, like this trait keeps bruising down. You ever get a French fry and it has that black black mark in it? Some of that's bruising when the because these potatoes go through a lot of machinery. And you could be like, oh, I can garden better, but you can't mass produce it like the farmers do. Acres and acres, you're going to need equipment to do it. It's just very interesting to think about that where our food comes from and how we've you know we've strained it and strained it to get the best crop so they took genetic traits out of a potato and be like oh this one bruises less this is a good size it lasts a long time it, you know so they take the best traits and they made a potato and then people are afraid of it for whatever reason but at the same time the yield would go up so what if we can go to 30 tons per acre rather than we went from 20 to 25 now to 30 now the farmer could do, produce more per acre and then the farmers will make more because if it bruises less they're graded on that right as it comes out of the truck they're we're taking samples and they get cut open they look and people a day or two later are looking at it being like oh yeah this was bruised so we're not going to pay you seven cents a pound we're going to pay you six or five and then your instant potatoes uh, I think a lot of those are your reject potatoes. Um, so if they have a, a disease called hematobin, they're not going to store as long from what I understand. It's like a parasite type worm that gets in a potato. So they get it and they could process it. It's basically like you cook it, you know, it's like meat. If there's bugs in the meat, when you cook it, it kills it all. So they, they process it and turn it into dehydrated potatoes, instant potatoes, right? And they can salvage a farmer's product that was bad. Granted, they pay less, they might pay half. <laughs> now you're getting three cents a pound. So you just break even pulling the stuff out of the ground just to get it out of there. A lot of farmers that grow organically, it's a lot of work. It's like twice the manpower, half the yield. Like if they do potatoes organic, like half the stuff's rotten. You know, because the bugs got to it or, you know, there's problems um, with that. And there may be alternative answers for that as time goes on. And, and guys that do it successfully, they can make some money. But a lot of the guys are like, I, I can't go organic. I won't make any money. Or it'll be years and years before I'll make a profit. So I'm just going to go the traditional route. So it's not an easy process um, to do that. Or to tell a farmer, hey, you'll make half the yield but we'll pay you a little more for it. He's like, you know, it's kind of counterproductive, you know, to lose half your product to make a few cents more a pound. So granted, there is a market there. And that's why, you know, you could buy grapes for $3 or you can buy organic grapes for $9. You know, it's like, that's, uh, there's a reason for it. What is right? I do not know. I'm not uh, anal either way. You know, I'm like, oh, it's organic. Half of that stuff is hype. They can call it organic all day long, but if it's grown on traditional farmland, it's been chemical with something over the years. And so like, I wonder if organic is truly organic. At some point, it's been sprayed, it's been fertilized. Maybe the greenhouse guys could get around some of that, but it's, it's interesting, can you f truly have organic? So 